Our atmosphere is vital to life on Earth. Ever-changing, it protects and sustains. It also causes weather. In August 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the east coast of America, causing the loss of thousands of lives and costing billions of dollars in damage. Accurate weather forecasts are therefore essential to help prevent the loss of life. Humans have been attempting to predict the weather for thousands of years. In 650 BC, the Babylonians studied the skies. In 1592, Galileo invented the thermometer, and Torricelli invented the barometer in 1643. Telegraph technology facilitated the coordination of ground-based weather observations in 1870, and in 1962, the first weather satellite, Tiras-1, was launched. Tiras-1 spurred a series of weather satellites, including GOES and POES, sparking a revolution in weather forecasting. Satellites offer a much larger field of view, from hundreds of kilometres to the Earth's hemispherical disk offering a much better overview of weather systems compared to terrestrial weather stations. The satellites can cover such large areas, the data they generate has a much higher uniformity, overcoming the need for intercalibration which is required for terrestrial instruments. Different techniques are used to collect data on weather conditions. The most commonly used methods employ microwaves, infrared and visible electromagnetic radiation detectors. These systems can be passive or active, Passive sensors detect the natural radiation signatures emitted from the atmosphere or the Earth's surface. Active systems use microwave scatterometry to measure backscattered radiation. The most common systems used are microwave and infrared sounders, microwave image scatterometers, radar altimeters, as well as optical and infrared surveying. Microwave sounders are passive instruments which are used to measure the humidity and temperature on the Earth's surface. As microwaves have a penetrative nature, with low frequencies finding ice clouds transparent, information about the size and attributes of clouds can be extrapolated and accurately mapped. Microwave images measure the same attributes as sounders, however they are active systems rather than passive. This gives a more stable and defined signature to measure. Infrared sounders work in much the same way as microwave sounders, though they provide a significantly larger vertical resolution. They provide very accurate water vapor and temperature measurements. However, they can only be used on cloud-free days, as clouds are opaque to infrared. Scatterometers use radar to provide an indication of wind speed and ocean current direction by measuring the amount of backscatter produced. Radar altimeters also use radar backscatter to gather data which is then processed in order to determine the depth of the ocean and to monitor climatic events such as El Nino. Optical and infrared surveying uses multispectral bands, including red, infrared and thermal bands, to image the Earth. One such sensor is the Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer. This sensor has six spectral bands, a red, infrared and mid-infrared band, as well as three thermal bands. The red and near-infrared bands are used to detect cloud cover, snow cover, ice and vegetation during daylight hours. The infrared band is also used to detect land water boundaries. The mid-infrared band is used to detect the difference between snow and ice. Finally, the three thermal bands are used to measure cloud cover and surface temperatures during both the day and night. The higher wavelength thermal bands are also used to correct for atmospheric water vapour and path radiance. Other meteorological satellites do not always have the same channels. Some emit the infrared, however all have the visible red and thermal band to allow for cloud monitoring during both day and night. The visible bands are used for many applications such as snow cover mapping, vegetation mapping, dust and sandstorm mapping as well as many other geological applications. For meteorological predictions, the cloud patterns and movements are most important. For a visible band, a high reflectivity from clouds indicates high water content and therefore a high probability of rain, whilst in a thermal infrared band, low cloud top temperatures indicate thicker, higher clouds, giving a high possibility of rain. In all of the images, clouds will appear white, however so will snow and ice in some bands. Therefore, it is necessary to take a normalised difference index. This index value allows for the distinction between clouds, ice and other aspects in the images. It is also important that data is collected regularly in order to track cloud movements and monitor cloud patterns. For this reason, geostationary orbits are often preferred, though this is not always true.
By using geostationary orbits, the frequency at which an image can be taken is not limited by the location of the satellite on orbit, but rather the time the equipment takes to capture the image and relay it to the ground station. In a geostationary orbit, the satellite will have a view of the Earth's hemispherical disk, but with the distance between the satellite and the Earth's surface being large, the spatial resolution is unlikely to be high. For example, the GOES-15 satellite mission has a spatial resolution of 1km for the red band, or 4km or 8km for its four thermal bands. Meteorological satellites in sun-synchronous orbits have a higher spatial resolution, however their temporal resolution is greatly decreased to once or twice a day depending on which bands are used. Satellites in sun-synchronous orbits also have a far more limited field of view. For example, NOAA-16 only has a spot width of 260 km. The data collected from these satellites is used to support weather forecasting and weather prediction, with sun-synchronous data being used to help predict local weather and geostationary data used to follow changing cloud formations on a near real-time basis. The visible band images help the human forecaster to interpret the current weather using images of cloud formation. The two main methods which rely heavily upon satellite data are nowcasting and numerical weather forecasting. Nowcasting is a technique used for very short range forecasting. It maps the current weather and uses the estimates of its speed and direction of movement to forecast the weather a short period ahead of time. Satellite imagery is especially important for this technique as rapid information gathering is required. The technique uses high resolution satellite observations combined with ground data to describe the initial conditions and initiate the nowcast. These conditions are then extrapolated by human forecasters and computer programs. Numerical weather prediction is another widely used model which relies heavily on data gathered from remote sensing satellites and forms the basis of modern weather forecasting. The system uses mathematical models of the atmosphere and ocean in terms of fluid dynamic equations to predict the weather conditions based upon the current weather conditions. In the future, both these techniques can be improved as computer models develop and data from remote sensing satellites can be gathered more frequently at a higher resolution and analyzed faster. This will cause lead times to become shorter and ultimately these simple techniques may even be used for instant forecasting such as estimating the immediate path of a tornado. Currently, several technologies have been researched to help improve the data available for forecasting techniques. This includes using global navigation satellite signals to log tropospheric zenith delays, which can be used for forecasting as they give a direct indication of the humidity in the air. Reflected GPS signals can also be used to gather altimetry data. Doppler wind LiDAR is a second developing technique which uses the Doppler shift of a LiDAR signal to provide details of the horizontal speed and direction of the wind, using backscatter from atmospheric molecules, cloud droplets and aerosols. Lightning monitoring is also being researched, however it will predominantly be used for monitoring climatic change and now casting rather than for long-term weather prediction. Satellite remote sensing has become very important to weather prediction, providing data on cloud coverage, humidity, wind speed and many other meteorological data sets. This information is then used to predict weather patterns five to six days ahead of time, allowing government bodies around the world to broadcast severe weather warnings for large-scale natural events.